Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This year's Singapore Human Capital Summit brings together more than 600 business chiefs, thought leaders and HR practitioners from some 20 countries to discuss human capital strategies and challenges for Asia. Your deliberations are all the more important because of the somber global outlook. The US and European economies are struggling in a sea of sovereign debt. Any sustainable solution to the debt crisis will require painful, immediate and long-term measures. However, politicians will find it difficult to get the voters to swallow them. So markets are full of uncertainties as investors worry over the possibility of a second global recession. Asia is doing well relative to the West, but it is not decoupled from the West. It cannot escape the impact of any major financial crisis in the US or Europe. Nevertheless, the immediate and medium-term outlook of its real economy is comparatively bright. The theme for this year's conference, People's Strategies for Asia, Capitalizing on Asia's Growth Engines, is therefore appropriate and relevant. The growth of Asia's business landscape presents tremendous opportunities for companies. Taking advantage of these opportunities requires the right human capital strategies. I would like to share with you Singapore's experience in three key areas. First, Companies need to invest in and develop strong leaders. We do this for our political leadership and public sector. Most of our larger private sector companies do likewise. Asia's business environment is diverse and complex because there are many countries with different forms of government and at different stages of development. This presents challenges for business leaders looking to write on Asia's growth potential. Senior executives, whether Asia based or otherwise, need a deep understanding of the varied business, regulatory and human capital landscape in Asia. They need to be familiar with local attitudes and practices and be able to develop customized business strategies. Second, Business need to attract and, re and retain the best talent. Even though we know this, we may still not be fully aware of what it takes to succeed. So last year, the Singapore Ministry of Manpower commissioned the study of professionals and graduating students in six global cities. The study found that factors such as training and development job opportunities and career advancement are the main drivers for talent attraction. Softer factors such as work-life harmony, workplace flexibility, creativity and innovation are essential for employee engagement and retention. Third, businesses need to improve the productivity of the workforce. Asia cannot continue to rely on low-cost labour to attract investment. Companies across the region are now facing growing wage pressures. To remain viable and attractive as an investment location, Asia needs to raise workforce productivity and skills. Singapore is happy to share its experience with others, like you. It can play a role in helping companies develop and execute effective human capital strategies for Asia. In this respect, we will invest resources to become a hub for a rich human capital ecosystem. Such an ecosystem brings together the government, academics and businesses to adapt the best practices to suit opportunities in Asia. With this robust public-private approach, the Human Capital Leadership Institute is the keystone in this ecosystem. Singapore can also help companies to develop a forward-thinking approach towards human capital management and leadership development, especially in small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs. 
to nurture a deep pool of HR talent. Singapore will raise the profile of HR as a profession. This year, MOM established a national HR scholarship program to attract talent into the HR profession. These scholarships are targeted at top students pursuing HR degrees. They will move on to work with selected partners upon graduation. We will also continue to invest in our continuing education and training infrastructure to equip our local workforce with the skills necessary to compete in an increasingly globalised economy, as well as to boost its productivity. The Business Management Workforce Skills Qualifications Framework announced at last year's summit to develop T-shaped professionals for the global economy has trained more than 4,000 employees so far. Another 1,300 are expected to complete the training by the end of this year. We are continuing to develop a variety of, of programs in areas such as intellectual property management and sales and marketing. This modular approach is flexible and allows workers to tailor the training to their needs. To conclude, Singapore has grown from a third world to a first world economy because of our emphasis on leadership, talent and skills training. From our experience, we believe that for companies to succeed in the region, they need to develop leaders and talent with the right knowledge of to operate in Asia. Then you can fully harness the growth potential of Asia. I hope the seminars and informal discussions over the next two days will help you formulate the human capital strategies for your organization. I wish you a fruitful summit.